reason why I'm so passionate about you know, being able to uh, help these cancer patients and survivors get their story out is because, well, you know, I'm a survivor myself. I had cancer, I had acute lymphoblastic leukemia when I was just 14 weeks old. I have been touched by cancer through my mom battling breast cancer about five years ago and currently her mother, my grandmother, is battling ovarian cancer. And if I were to put myself in a patient or survivor's shoes, I would want to experience as much as I could with, you know, the time that has been cut because of cancer. I've been like trying to talk about it like with people that'll like understand and like help me move forward. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel like uh, cancer was put in your path for a reason? Hell yeah. Everything happens for a reason and I am trying to make the best out of the situation. Cancer has been a part of my life, but it does not define me as a person. I didn't know, I didn't know how to deal with it. I had no one around me and I, you know, everything I see on the news is all negative stuff. And you know, anything that you hear is, oh yeah, this person survived cancer. Oh, but a couple years later, they got cancer again and they died. You know, it's like, why are those stories being, you know, being, being heard? What am I supposed to think? You know, what am I supposed to do with my life if I'm gonna die in five years? Cancer almost took my life once, and I almost let, let it take my life again. And I don't want that to happen to survivors, especially. I was uh, officially diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, stage three. You know, it's scary as a patient, because, you know, like I said, you're given this diagnosis, you're seeing all these different kinds of doctors, you're trying to understand what the heck is going on and how each person plays a role in your health care and whatnot, you know. And I was, you know, fairly newly married, new mom, you know, I was in my 20s still trying to figure out life and whatnot. I think the biggest thing is, is that people need to realize cancer's not a death sentence. I've met so many people who were told by their doctors, get your affairs in order. By all means, whether you're stage one or stage four, be prepared anyways. But at the same time, like, live your life. You know, do what you need to do to get through each day and through your diagnosis, but still live your life. You know, because even if you've never been touched by anything, isn't the thing supposed to live as if you die tomorrow? So live that same way regardless. The reason why we are going with blood tingling activities is one, is that's like the one true way to like show, I guess like pure happiness. Being able to see the person's eyes like right after they do it, I mean that's like, I guess like the best feeling that I can explain because I know truly that like, they know in their head that I just jumped off a 70 foot cliff. Oh my God, like, and they would never have imagined themselves being able to do that. And that's where we come in. So we can push them against their fears. I am biking across America because I feel that it is one of the biggest challenges that I have set for myself. And if I can't ride across the country, how am I gonna expect you know, these cancer patients that we're gonna be working with and cancer survivors to face their own fears if I can't face one of my fears of, you know, being able to travel for three months and being on the road and riding over 4,000 miles. We truly feel that anything is possible and we want to be able to document this to show people that anything is possible, that, you know, three random guys that have never met each other before can come together and only know each other for a couple months by planning this project and be able to bike across America for three months. I mean, that needs to be documented.